This is the time of the year that the Chowan County Cooperative Extension comes to you with our annual report to the people. We would like to share with you what our agents and staff have been doing in Chowan County during the COVID-19 pandemic. Our program areas are 4-H, nutrition, and agriculture. Chowan County Cooperative Extension, this is Gail. How can I help you? Hi, I'm Patty Bowers and I work for the 4-H FNIP program uh, here at the North Carolina Cooperative Extension here in Chowan. I also work in Perquimans County. We reach kids ages uh, 5 to 19. I, if we have potential 4-H'ers, I will send them to the 4-H agent. I also work with the Family Consumer Science agent in the summer to do cooking classes, food safety skills, um, and I do those in the school as well. I have been here for 17 years. I've never even heard of 4-H, so I got this job. And the Expanded Food Nutrition Education Program has been a wonderful way to reach the kids in the community, partnering with other agencies, um, helping our youth to be healthier each and every day. My name is Cameron Byram, and I'm the 4-H agent here in Chowan County. 4-H is the youth development portion of the North Carolina Cooperative Extension. We serve youth ages 5 to 18 in areas like community service, health and wellness, and leadership, just to name a few. 4-H truly is an opportunity for all. Here's a little about what's been going on in our program. Due to the COVID pandemic, face-to-face 4-H programming across the state has been put on hold until further notice. This summer, in an effort to still provide educational opportunities to engage our youth, we offered educational kits. These were self-guided kits that included lessons, activities, and snacks around a certain topic. During June, July, August, and September, we offered 11 different educational kits. These kits included Grow Your Own Clovers, Grow to Eat with 4-H, Peanut Butter Pinecone Bird Feeders, Marshmallow Rockets, DIY t-shirt tote bags and bath fizzies, wind energy, kindness rocks, exploring nature, crops of North Carolina peaches, mini herb gardens, and stomp rockets. Over the course of the summer, we have packed and distributed nearly 350 kits. We are planning to continue these kits throughout the fall and winter months. We also hosted our first ever virtual junior chef's camp. Kits were distributed that contained all sorts of kitchen gadgets and all of the ingredients needed for the entire week of cooking. Youth from across the county met each day on Zoom. Mary Morris, Patty Bowers, and myself taught lessons on kitchen and food safety, hand washing, local foods, and measuring. Each day, the group prepared a recipe together from the comfort of their own homes. One of our junior chef participants is now going to share about his experience with this virtual cooking class. The reason why I use, my name is Logan, and the reason why I enjoyed 4-H last year was because of all the new foods I learned about, all the, all the recipes to make them so I would have them to eat for snack and stuff. Alright, it was so much fun. Thank you for the opportunity. Bye. A large part of my job is just going to see growers and looking at their field and looking for any issues that they might be having. These issues can include diseases, insect pressure, soil issues, really anything that might be negatively impacting the grower's farm. So for instance, right now I'm out at AJ Smith & Sons Produce Farm looking at some pumpkins, just looking for any diseases or insects that might be impacting their pumpkin yield. And that's just been a large part of what I've been doing this past growing season. And thankfully I've still been able to do those site visits under the current pandemic situation. Unfortunately, I don't have any videos from my um, horticulture or forestry meeting, so I've recruited a couple of growers to talk about what I've been doing on their farms this past year. 
Nettie has been extremely helpful for um, us here at Wetland Plants this year. Um, every time I have called her over any problem, whether it be um, a fungus or an insect, um, Nettie will come running. She would take samples of things if she was not sure of what it is and would follow through to make sure that she got answers. Um, Nettie is a great asset. Uh, we couldn't work here without her. Looked at a lot of pumpkin diseases, a lot of watermelon diseases, a lot of soil borne diseases. Um, did a lot of treatments for it, learned a lot about it. Uh, hopefully we can use it again next year to better, better what we're doing. Not only is she very knowledgeable, but she's proactive. She actually comes out here and checks on me and calls me and makes sure that I'm if I've got any needs at all, then I'll have them taken care of. She's been out here checking on me in the winter time when I'm pruning, and she came back in the thinning, and that all both of these times are very critical. The peaches, I would imagine, might be the hardest thing to actually grow, and I don't know really what I'd do if I had her. Hi, I'm Steve Gobble, the area aquaculture agent. I'm housed in Chowan County. I have aquaculture education responsibilities for the 22 counties of the Northeast Extension District. I also handle aquacultural as well as other aquatic questions from across the state. This has been especially true for the past six months with a significant increase in fish pond questions. There, there have been a lot of aquatic weed questions, with several dealing with azola or water fern. I've also gotten questions about general water quality, including turbidity. And there have been the typical fish management questions about fish growth and lack of fish growth in ponds. I'm also co-vice chairman of the North Carolina Aquaculture Development Conference. Uh, we conducted our 32nd annual conference in mid-March of this year with the challenge of the beginnings of the shutdown due to the pandemic. We are currently place, uh, planning the 33rd annual conference, making contingencies in case we need to go entirely virtual. This conference is currently scheduled for March 18th through the 20th. I was also able to purchase a drone to be able to get a different perspective of aquaculture operations, like a crawfish pond, research plots using trees to utilize aquaculture effluent, and office gutter clogs as well as field crop videos for use in virtual field days. This technique is still being developed and perfected by both the pilot and the eventual end user. Hey Chowan County, thanks for allowing me to be the horticulture agent here in Chowan. I'm also an agent for Gates and Perquimans County and here's a highlight of what the program has been up to over the past year. Our Master Gardeners completed 2019 with close to 1,500 volunteer hours. That's an added value to the community of about $35,000. They educate the public by training themselves and then sharing through outlets like demonstration gardens, adult and youth partnerships like the High School Horticulture Program and the Boys and Girls Club. When COVID hit, our master gardeners seamlessly transitioned to online training and online volunteering. We were able to continue the Ask a Master Gardener program remotely, as well as continue our successful Grow to Eat program in partnership with area food pantries. What we weren't able to continue was our annual spring garden show. That event was canceled. However, we were still able to raise funds for our high school scholarship with a bulb sale. In addition to working with our master gardeners, we work with our area landscape professionals, offering classes like the Albemarle Area Landscape School, and with COVID, resources in Spanish and English to help employees and their employers. Trainings were also virtual as a result of COVID, facilitating through online learning opportunities we also work with our landscapers to make sure they are aware of current issues like seeds being unexpectedly shipped, murder hornets, and a new pest in 2020 for our area, the crepe myrtle bark scale, expected to affect about 50% of our landscape trees. 
Issues like these are also shared with general public through education opportunities, including in the Chowan Herald, our website, and through a fall training we regularly hold known as Gardening in the Albemarle. This year, the course will be online. Hopefully soon, we can hold courses like this and others in our outdoor classroom we plan to construct in the Chowan County Arboretum thanks to a grant. Good morning, my name is Matt Leary and I'm the Chowan County Agriculture Extension Agent. I'm gonna be going over with you the four major programs that I've implemented this year in the county. Those being the Northeast Ag Expo Field Day and Variety Trials, uh, Black Light Moth Traps, Salinity Checks, and the Fall Pod Blasting Clinics. So the Northeast Ag Expo is an extension-based group comprised of the ag agents from the six northeastern counties in the state. And each year we implement research in variety trials in corn, soybeans, and wheat, as well as other research that we showcase at the two annual field days that we host each year. The Small Grains Field Day, which focuses solely on wheat production, uh, happens in February. The Summer Field Day, which we host in July, focuses on research that we've conducted on crops that are the most prevalent crop in that host county for that year. Unfortunately, because of COVID this year, we were not able to have our summer field day, but we hope that we will be starting that up again soon. So for the rest of the programs that I mentioned earlier, let's go out to the field so I can show you what they're so about. We're out here today to check one of the light traps I have here in the county. This is it. Um, one of these black, uh, the purpose of these black light moth traps is to check the populations of certain pests that the farmers uh, have to deal with, those being green stink bugs, corn ear worms, and tobacco bud worms. So I come out and check this two to three times a week from about the middle of May till now and record those populations. If I ever see an increase in population, I will go and uh, inform all the farmers in our county so that they can you know, have a better idea of when to scout and apply their chemicals to control such insects. So I've got two traps in the county. I've got this one here in the Yapim area and I've got one in the Rocky Hawk area. So we're up here in the northern part of Chowan County to check the salinity in the uh, Chowan River. The reason behind checking the salinity is that as the summer months progress and things begin to dry out, if we start to miss rain events, the farmers need to start irrigating their crops. So a lot of them pull their uh, irrigation water from either the Albemarle Sound or the Chowan River. And since both bodies of water are brackish, sometimes the salt levels in the water can get too high and it can damage some of the salt sensitive crops. The number one being peanuts, but and sweet potatoes, but most other crops can be salt sensitive. So once a month, starting from about May to June, I go out and I will check the salt in, in the river and the sound uh, from on multiple locations through the county using this salt meter. And if the readings get too high, then I'll continue to check it weekly until it goes down. And if they do get too high, the farmers get a notification, you know, letting them know that the reading is X amount and that they don't need to irrigate, but X amount of times, depending on the salt level, they don't need to irrigate X amount of times until they've got a good drenching rainfall to push the salt out of the soil and off the plant so they don't damage their plants. So I'm gonna go through and check the uh, salt here real quick. So I've got my device on and I've got a probe and all I do is I toss it in the water and see what it reads. Let it sit for a little bit and as you can see the meter is currently reading 0.0, .0 part per thousand salt in the water. So um, since it's reading so low I would go check my other places and record it so that I have records of what I've done and then wait till next month to check it again. Hey everyone, we're here in Tyner today where I host my pod blasting clinics. So pod blasting is a term that we use for a technique that is used to determine peanut maturity. So I host these clinics starting, every week, uh, starting in September and host them every week through about the middle of October. Farmers will come to these clinics, bring me samples of peanuts, sometimes on the vine like this one, and we will pick off some of the, uh, the most mature pods off of these plants. Once we get a sample big enough, 
We'll take them to the pod blaster, which is basically just a pressure washer, and we will use that pressure washer to scrape or blast the outer layer off of this peanut. Once that outer layer has been blasted off, you'll be able to see different colors depending on the pod maturity. The darker the pod, the more mature it is. Once we finish blasting that outer layer off the pod, we'll then take the sample and throw them on these peanut maturity boards that we have here. Uh, with these boards, we can then determine how close it is for time for timing of, to dig and to harvest uh, for these samples. So that's all I have for my report to the people video. I hope y'all found this information uh, valuable and uh, caught a glimpse of what the Ag Extension Program in Chowan County is all about.